Gate 14 podcast and Boba Shet might be uh Boba Shet and the Toronto Blue Jays hate each other. That's that's I don't know what other way to say it. JR isn't here. If you could, if you're watching the stream, he's working, working man. Credit to him. Couldn't be me. Uh Avery, what's up, man? How you doing? Good. Uh yeah, Bo Bo hates the Blue Jays, and the Blue Jays seem to hate Bo. So a little interesting predicament we have going on for the second straight offseason between those two. But uh no, yeah, Jer. I mean, back in the early days of this thing, Jer was usually a no-show. Like, we couldn't get Jer. We didn't know if he was coming on. And then a couple of good months of Jer showing up, and we're just back to the basics again. Yeah, he just he got cocky. He got cocky. He saw the ball going through the hoop a lot. He started shooting from everywhere. And now he's just – now he's he got cocky again. He's not on. But that's fine. But I wanted to go into that Boba Shett stuff because a lot of people are saying, I'm not looking that much into it, all this, all that. What do you mean you're not looking that much? Like, if the Jays wanted him to be happy like they did with Vladdy, they would have they would have said, all right, 7.5, sure. The Jays and Vladdy came to an agreement pretty fucking quick, right? Like, I, I think he's gone. I think he's as good as gone. Is that crazy to say? I don't know. I, it's a weird predicament. So for my angle on this, one, again, second straight offseason where they've been different. He said – Last offseason, he thinks he's a special case. Like the ARB stuff isn't for him, and he thinks he should be making more than what they can offer, whatever it is. So that's that's a problem, first of all. Second of all, I don't think he gets kind of the love he deserves. If we've said it here before, like if we have to choose gun to our head, you're keeping Vlad, you're keeping Bo. I think most people in the city are gonna say you're keeping Vlad, right? So yeah, a guy who probably thinks he's second fiddle. The Jays are taking care of Vlad and seem they don't think they're taking care of him. For me, I think he's it feels like he's good as gone again. We don't get many sound bites from Bo that, that aren't like yeah. kind of zipped up from the media and all that stuff. So it's a little bit different, but from everything that's gone on it, the relationship off the field, um, some teams are going to make him feel wanted, I guess, if that's what he wants. Yeah. He Someone's going to yeah. give him the money when he gets that opportunity to make a bunch of money. So for me, it's yeah, it's, <laughs> it, you can't have the front office and your agent just, getting shit on each other all the time like it's just not going to work out like this is my thing right and if i'm going to the table and vladdy wants whatever vladdy gets obviously i mean let's compare the let's compare the recognizable like monuments that they vladdy came second in mvp voting vladdy is a gold glover vladdy vladdy is a silver slugger vladdy is a multiple time uh all-star boba shet doesn't have a gold glove he doesn't have a silver slugger award and he's been in the all-star game once in his career. So from a, I know you could probably the stat nerds and all that shit could bring me all these analytics and random and weird shit that, that why Bo should get paid. But 7.5 million is more than what Carlos Correa got in his arb is more than what Trey Turner got when he went through arbitration. So Bo Bichette is is saying pretty much he's better than Trey Turner and Carlos Correa. And he deserves more than what they got when they're with through their arbitration processes. So that is just one, in my opinion, not to me, it's delusional. And two, it's like, I, I, I just, I, I don't understand. Like what, what the fuck is going on here? I think, um, so I was reading someone's tweet. I forget who it was, sorry, who forever it was, but they're more famous than we are already. Um, saying that the baseball portion of ARB isn't as nasty as like the hockey version of it is. Yeah. So when they go through it, it's not as much like, hey, you guys do all this wrong. That's why we shouldn't pay you the money like the hockey is, I believe. I've heard it is, though. Okay, That's what... so maybe I could be wrong. I read it, and I was I was kind of interested. They just – they know the front office. They go through their practices. They know what they have to check off for guys in our – that type of thing. So maybe that makes things a little bit better. But if every year – like, if every year you're fighting on your contract, when it comes to free agency, when it's time for him to leave, what makes him want to negotiate again if – if he loses in these ARB cases, he doesn't make the money that he wants. Like they filed two and a half million different, right? Yeah. Like, Jays were at five. He was seven and a half. If they just do that all those years, there's no goodwill when it goes to negotiating an extension or negotiating a t- contract when it comes to free agency. So he's gone. No, he, he, this is, you don't fight. You don't fight like in contract talk and do all this stuff every single year. And you sign back like that just doesn't happen. That don't like, 
Bo, Bo and the Jays front office is that toxic couple that know that they can't do any better than what they have. So they just stick with each other. And then when it's time to cut ties down the road, when it's really toxic, they just cut ties. That's what Bo and Vlad, that's what the Vladdy and the Blue Jays are. Because Bo knows if he signs with the team for a lot of money, it might not be a contender, right? It might, he's not going to have that much protection in the lineup that he has with the Toronto Blue Jays. He's not going to be loved by an entire country. He's not going to like be playing with guys that he came through the system with. And Atkins knows and that you might not be able to get a young shortstop that could hit like Boba Shek could hit. So they're kind of just sticking with each other. And I, and you know how dumb it's going to look on both the mediators like, no, nah, dude, you're getting five mil. Yeah. I don't know what, what did they, what happened last year with it? I don't remember. Um, I think it was somewhere in the middle. If I remember correctly. Okay, yeah. No, it'll be it'll be tough. Again, like I can see Bo Bichette wearing a Dodger uniform. I can't see Vladdy wearing a Dodger uniform. You know, it's just like how much does he really care about playing for a whole country when he's not from here? Yeah. Vlad, born in Montreal, right? His dad did the same thing playing for one of the two teams. Vladdy's gonna country. be what this isn't a Vladdy's gonna be a blue jay for life. He, has to be. He he will never wear another jersey. That's well, just the- maybe Albert Pujols esque, like legend yeah. for forever and then start to wind down and get them for sure. But one thing that got lost in the shuffle and we could talk about Boba shut this arbitration with Boba shut this. There is two war crimes that took place during arbitration. Let me give you this. Calvin Biggio getting $2.8 million in our don't send his agent. Or did I mean, they, set, agent did might, they settle on that or did yeah, they, they settled on 2.8. Okay. So he didn't, so he's go getting like $200,000 less or more than Dalton Varsho, which is wild. <laughs> Look at how both their careers <laughs> and Trent Thornton getting a million dollars. Like who, what both those agents, like that is the real war crimes of arbitration. And we could talk about both for years and all this stuff, like whatever. Calvin Biggio getting 2.8 million in our, when he is, the 17th bat on the Toronto Blue Jays is fucking wild. That is the war crime. Uh, yeah, that's very funny. Um, I, the tears of how they get their money it, it is very funny when you look at, if you look at it dollars per war, maybe Kevin Biggio might be like the worst player in baseball <laughs> based on how valuable he is to the team. Um, and then Varsho might be the best contract in all of baseball based on uh, how much he's getting. But I, again, like the arbitration stuff is kind of, I don't know it that well. I want to be able to get in there. Like same with the international, like bonus pool, all that type of stuff. There's a lot, there's so much baseball shit that you can just. And it's not like that in any other sport either. You can just just, get lost in it, man. That's true. And like, like, it's not, it's not like that in any other sport really, where there's like international bonus money, international pool money. You could trade it. You could give international money during a trade. I don't know how it works, but there is. Baseball is a very fucking weird sport. But one thing that I want to talk about also is um that fucking moron Brennan Delaney, whatever the fuck his name is, <laughs> Blue Jays clown. Uh he's a coward who runs away. And I want to talk I about I think this. you're being mean to him. How was I being mean to him? It's just who it's just how you are, and he's just like didn't but what what was I saying to be mean? Because I me and Lewis, who had the same opinion, hopped on a call, like we hopped on a live or a spaces and talked it out. And like, I wasn't attacking him. He wasn't attacking me. It was like a civil conversation. I don't know why this moron was like, just like refusing to talk to us. Yeah, I'm, maybe he's not a talker. You did. I did see the DM where you just said, join this live. <laughs> just nothing else. <laughs> I watched well, it on multiple times and he's like, I love going on podcasts. I'll, relax. All right, buddy. Like, let's let's relax here. Who you think you are? But I want to talk about that. So obviously, Lewis, who's our guy, he uh, he came up. He said that Mitch White was struggling with uh, maybe maybe he was struggling with moving and stuff like that. He's a 28 year old man. Um coming to a new team and stuff like that. So we kind of talked it out and he kind of talked him. He kind of talked himself out of that take with Mitch white, uh, getting his toes wet and like not being comfortable moving to a different country. Um, where do you stand on from a neutral side? Cause you obviously don't like, maybe you don't agree with me. Maybe you don't agree with the Brennan and all that stuff argument, but using that as an excuse for a pitcher who can't compete in major league baseball is a wild take. Like that's like maybe like the sixth or seventh thing that you would bring up maybe the fact that he can't locate a pitch or he walks a hundred dudes like yeah that he can't is get any argument. swing and miss stuff yeah so for me it's we did this song and dance a couple of years ago 
the COVID year with Ryu when he just had a kid and he hadn't seen his family for what, like a year. That's a fair argument. Yeah, exactly. It's like you're on the other side of the world. That's a little bit different from Mitch White, where I think someone said he had family in Toronto and like you live in California. Sure. It's a little bit different. You get thrown into the middle of all that stuff. But like if you have good stuff, you're going to get people to swing and miss. You're going to get out. I mean, maybe it's all, like he wasn't great with the Dodgers, like wasn't outstanding to come here. It was a shock. Like they were fine to give him up for Dodgers that are top tier organization. They know what they have with pitching and they were just fine to give him up. Right. There was a reason they got rid of him. For me, I don't really think, yeah, I don't like, I don't want to make excuses for guys, but then someone came after you. He's like, you don't, care about mental health i was like what like what well, like that's another one yeah. like i wasn't in no shape or form i'm talking about the mental health i'm just saying like let's talk like in this the, the people that are saying that like with um mitch white he oh he couldn't deal with like the all the like the the pressure and his family and moving to toronto and stuff like that those are the same people that'll talk shit on Jose Barrios who was going through real life family shit last year with that like hurricane or whatever happened back in his hometown and had to like actual help actually help his family and deal with that like you can't pick one or another here like t- talk shit about Jose Barrios but the a guy who is perfectly healthy he has I'm assuming a pretty good family life I'm assuming he's a good guy I've heard nothing but good things from his teammates about him Using that as like the main excuse of why a dude couldn't pitch well, what like what are we doing here? Yeah, it's not for me. It was never like what I did. Obviously, ne- never played major league baseball. Like, if mentally you were in a good spot, like sure you'd walk a couple guys, but like your stuff doesn't really change. You don't drop velo because mentally you're not doing that well. Usually, like sure there could be some cases. So the stuff was how that played out through the whole year, kind of chose to me i i don't know what sat him on i don't think it really hurt him that bad but again you never know what's going i understand on. it too what i mentioned to, Lu- to lewis was i understand it if it's the first couple appearances right like obviously like fuck he's struggling the first couple appearances maybe he's like not comfortable in toronto yet he's still trying to move his family and stuff like that okay that's fine i understand the first couple appearances this dude was asked the entire time he was with the jays like terrible and i know Maybe there was bad luck there with the fucking defense or whatever. We'll see. But I'll tell you what. Next year, this fucking Mitch White better fucking perform or I'm coming for that Brennan guy. And I'm not going to come for Lucy's our guy. But Brennan will be getting it. I'll say, you think he's still adjusting? Or what's the deal here with Mitch White? <laughs> like, that. that's what we have to say. Because, first of all, his family being in Cali, like, what is it, like a four-hour flight? Like, we're talking like his family had to travel across the the, the the world to come see him and stuff. Like, like he could still call, like, I'm not bashing mental health, obviously. I'm bashing the fact that using that as your main excuse when there is people in the world that literally have to, like, move their entire fucking family and their kids and shit like that. To the different Cuban schools. guys have to defect from their country to be there. Yeah, the Cuban guy, yeah, literally have to fucking swim in, like, disgusting, polluted oceans and shit like that to go to the U S to play baseball. And we're giving a crutch to a guy that had to fly or oh, probably fly first class from California to play baseball in Toronto. And you would Come think on. of that. And you would think you get less pressure going from LA to Toronto. Would you not? Yes. And you would think, and the fans are way more lenient. <laughs> like they're way more forgiving than Dodgers fan Dodgers fans. The consensus of every guy that I know that plays in the show, they are the worst type of people on planet Earth, the Dodger fans. Well, the Yankee fans are got to be. Oh, worse. yeah. Yeah, true. That's a good point. Yeah, but it just, it, it was a wild take. So I thought I'd I mean, got- he can improve. What we're saying about Mitch White is he can improve. Like that, I think Brennan's main thing to you was there's signs of the makings of a solid major league pitcher. And I hope there is. And I never bashed the stuff that Mitch White has. I'm just saying, don't blame the, don't make the crutch and the excuse. The fucking guy not being able to be comfortable with finding an apartment. That was the excuse he made. He had to find an apartment. (laughs) It's like, what are we doing here? They have to find an apartment every single time they get called up from minor leagues and go to level to level. And I'm sure I'm sure the Blue Jays have someone who does that for them. Yeah, they have travel advisors. Like when Bryson made it, got called up to the Phillies, he immediately had like an apartment and he had like a travel advisor schedule all the flights for his family to come here. They do nothing the players like it's just it's a terrible argument it's fucking dumb and in my opinion it was just 
it just didn't make any sense. And I had to talk about it because it just, it didn't, it, it, it made me sick to even hear about it. Like, especially I wasn't bashing mental health and like that guy bringing that up was wild, but we won't go into that, but I wanted to um go back to the Boba Shet stuff. So how does that work now? Like is next year, his last year on his contract. I have no idea. I can look at sport rack here. Um, no, he's got, you get like three years of ARB, don't oh, you? Yeah, he, you do. You he do. was pre-ARB last year. Yeah. So okay. if we look at, oh, I don't know why that didn't come up. He's eligible for free agency in 2026. Okay. This is going to be, I mean, you want to talk about a guy that's going to be miserable. If they have to do this every year until 2026. And that was this, my thing. This like, dude is going to hate his life. Hate his life. Like, we're only in the year 2023, and we're blessed and lucky to be able to have Boba Shed and Vladdy on like rookie deals or arbitration deals until 2026. That saves a lot of money, I guess, for the team. But this guy, they're gonna have to go through this next year, 2024, 2025, and then go into contract discussions as a free agent in 2026. I mean, this dude is gonna hate the front office. Hate. Yeah, he's uh he's gonna be pretty young for a free agent as well. 28 going yeah. into his free agent year. I guess most of them were 29 this offseason. So it's bad. It's not going to end well. There's no way it ends well with Bo, I don't think. Well, Bo, he's also right. They're going to. Is he a Boris guy as well? No. CAA Sports. Who? That's uh, like, that's the company that like a lot of the guys are with. There's a lot of CAA guys. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think that's Boris Tiger Woods. That's Tiger Woods's company. Okay. Um, yeah, that's Tiger Woods's company. I'm almost positive. Yeah, it has Otani, uh, Musgrove, I think is in this as well. Oh, no, I don't know if Musgrove's in this. He used to be in it. But yeah, Otani, Hunter Green, Alcantara, all these guys, like Real Muto. So yeah, they're, uh, it's a big agency, obviously, but I couldn't imagine Bo Bichette's agent is getting his fucking money's worth having to talk to these guys, like deal with the Jays every offseason, not to go to like a, uh, what is it? A mediator? It's nightmare fuel. Yeah. Do you know or any of your pals go through that yet? Um, I know. Uh, I I've obviously. I mean, I've definitely had a player. I don't remember how. That, I know. Uh, what's it called? Winker might have went through, and he talked about it on the podcast where you're just getting fucking belittled by the GMs of your team. A lot of the players won't uh, actually attend that. Yeah. Because thank they, God. Because because they'll just be like, "Fuck you." Yeah, like they'll just hate their fucking management and shit like that. But um, yeah, I know it's uh, it's a lot of belittling that takes place there. But the craziest one is is like uh, is the Max Freed with the Braves. They're like two million apart as well, and they're with the same agency. They're both with CAA. Really? Yeah. So maybe they just like get, they like arguments. I guess I'm not sure. Yeah, but they're um, trying to get their guys paid, which I mean, as a player, you got to be pretty happy with that. But on the management side, you can't. Can't be enjoying it. Yeah. We'll see where it happens. I think, I hope I'm wrong with this, but I, I think Boba Shep might be. And the Jays making, trying to make a splash with uh, his Bogarts. Xander. They were in on Bogarts as well, which is news as well. Like it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a weird next couple years here. Uh, with that I don't think we give Bo the love he deserves, though. No, I, no, we definitely don't. And we've pumped his tire. We like the month of September. We went crazy with Bo and stuff like that. We love Bo. Um, but he, I mean, we we kind of dogged on him when he was shit, like well, as well. Yeah, which he right, should do rightfully so. I mean, yeah, rightfully so. But by the way, we got to talk about that Chris Black Ricky Tiedemann thread. Holy fuck, Ricky Tiedemann's gonna be a freak, <laughs> right? Well, uh, we got to talk about the you say Kikuchi thread. Yeah, I'm all in on Kikuchi. <laughs> I, I, if I couldn't be more in on you, I, I mean, that, that was threat. my thing too, with the, the argument with those guys was sure. Mitch White can be good. He he's probably like a four, a pitcher right now. Like he's yeah, probably yeah. better. He's probably better than triple a, but he's just not a great big league pitcher. But then you have, you say Kikuchi who has all the makings, all like the actual swing and miss stuff that you can project forward be like, Hey, that's the guy we want as our fifth guy instead of, someone who's never really done it before. And that, that was kind of where I was coming from yeah. on that. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I, 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 I don't know. We'll see how we'll see. I mean, they're going to, it's going to be a dog fight. Like 
you don't realize until you start really following a team how important spring training is. Like, if Kikuchi carves in spring training, he's easily the number five guy. If Mitch White carves during spring training and opens a lot of eyes, he's going to be the number five guy. Like, it's crazy how important spring training is. You don't really think about it as a fan, but when you cover the team, it's like, wow, you say Kikuchi every single time he touches that mound, he's really pitching for something here. Yeah, I mean, if he can show that he can locate pitches uh, to start spring training, there's – he he has the upper hand for sure. Yeah, and we got to talk about the Brandon Belt signing. Uh, you want to talk about a locker room guy. I mean, the videos that have been released of Brandon Belt just entering with the Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> Is that Did I say that name right? Yeah, no, definitely okay, right. Well, I was going to say Caribbean. That would have been scary. Um, yeah, no, he's entering with that. He was called the captain, for Christ's sakes, on the Giants. Maybe the better captain than Derek Jeter. I'm all in on Brandon Belt. I am. All, I think he said his leg feels the best it's felt or two or three years, which is when he was hitting like 29 home runs and hit like 270. If Brandon Belt could just steal a DH spot, holy fuck, this team's going to be a wagon. Yeah, that's what they said that um, they told him he's going to play a ton. And I feel like they've told that to everyone they brought in, which makes <laughs> yeah. sense. Like they said that to Kiermaier too, right? And I was like, oh, where is he going to play? And yeah. Like, yeah, they told me I'm going to start all the time. So that's what they're going to do with him. But though he's a seasonally good guy to me, I'm a little, it's odd to me why the giants would get rid of him or not pony up to pay. I don't him. think they would want like, that's a lot of money. The Jays are giving. Him. It's not our money. I don't give a fuck. Get paid. Yeah. Belt. But I mean, I don't know off the top of my head. I can't name like the, just the next replacement for him on the giants. Like they, they could have used his bat again. Hundred percent. I mean, man, you're looking at these stats here. If he said he could get back to where he was in 21 and 22, obviously a little bit different because in 20 or 21 and 20, in 20 he hit 309 with 30 nukes. Yeah, and he was like, sick at the start of 21. And he was sick, right? And then he got injured and kind of stuff like that. But he did say like he is fully healthy now. Like this is the best he's felt, which fires me the fuck up because. He's going to be like a seven-hole hitter, just absolutely raking. This team, this lineup is going to be absolutely fucked. And the only weak point of it is Kevin Kiermaier in the nine-hole. That's literally like – but he, he's a guy that can kind of be a, a hard at bat as well. So, fuck, man. This was a really good signing. And I, I know we bashed Ross Atkins. If maybe I didn't, like, let him cook a little bit um, earlier in the offseason. But, man, these moves he's made has been – Really impressive and filling holes on teams like that lefty bat the Jays needed off the bench and a potential starter, obviously, now it's lefties to line up, man. Brandon Belt, if he could be that guy, holy fuck, is Ross Atkins going to look like a genius? Let's also think about, I never want to throw this on someone and might be dumb to say, but if Vlad gets hurt, you have a very, very capable replacement for a long time. And before that, you did it. Before yeah. you signed Brandon Belt, you really didn't. Kevin yeah, Biggio, yeah. Kevin play Biggio first. playing first base. Yeah, yeah. so it's it, it's an awesome signing. I just um, Brandon Belt is like that would be one of the last guys. If you would have told me like five years ago to be a Blue Jay, I'd be like, yeah, no fucking chance. Is Brandon he Belt. the only guy on the team who's won a ring? Yes. So, I mean, I'm fine. Again, it seems like. Oh, sorry, I, Springer, Springer. Sorry, I, yeah. I didn't. Yeah, Springer. That was dumb of me as well. Um, but again, I hated the thought of people saying the offseason, the locker room getting more serious. Maybe it's not more serious, but you got another guy who's done it before. When it comes down to it, like say the wild card, you're giving up eight runs or whatever when you're up. It's like a guy you can talk to, sell you down. He's been there before. A multiple World Series champ. Like, I love this signing. I really do. And, and think about this, man. Like, who's another guy? that the Jays took a quote-unquote chance on, signed him to a one-year deal after a struggling season. Marcus Simeon. Obviously different ages, maybe, like a little bit different ages, but fuck, man. If, like, the Jays have taken a lot of chances on these, like, one-year hitters, especially with the Marcus Simeon situation, where it's like, this guy was a massive, massive part of the team. And Brandon Belt, if you look at a lot of his home runs, these balls are launched into the upper deck at Rogers Center. Because, <laughs> because... Um, Oracle Park is a graveyard. Like yep. that's yeah, that's what a lot of people say. Like, and Oracle it gets Park, and it gets yeah. cold off the water there. Like, yeah, you see, you see people in California wearing sweaters and like coats to games in the middle of July. So maybe the ball doesn't fly there as well. I'm in, I I like the sign. I love the off season. We're we're one piece away from this being a complete team, and it's what Robbie Grossman, Adam Duvall, 
Yeah. Pick or, pick or choose one of them. Don't know why it's taken so long, but me neither. I mean, maybe some contract stuff. But. AJ Pollock would have been nice, though. I, yeah. AJ Pollock would have been nice. Um, AJ, yeah, but Robbie Grossman, obviously, that'll be, that'll be a, I, I like Robbie Grossman. I think he's a pretty competent outfielder. He's a good, if he knows his role as the fourth outfielder, fuck it. Yeah, like, I just don't think anyone wants, like, those guys don't want to commit to that. Adam Duvall socked like 40 dingers two years ago. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's gonna hit two ten, but he's got yeah. power, and I think he's a decent glove. I think Look. Ross Atkin just does the classic lies where he's like, "You're gonna play every day." That's <laughs> they what he's tell, been doing. They just tell it to every. It's like that's when what you... he's been seriously doing with every guy. It's like Kevin Kiermaier was like, "Oh yeah, I'm playing every day," and then you got. But I do think Brandon I was Bunt playing is... career mode in FIFA, and like when you're the manager, you just you have to carve out a role for the player before you sign them. I and every time think... I would just be like starter, like very vital player, and then just sit him on <laughs> I my do bench. Think... I do think Brandon Belt's going to play a lot and save the knees of Kirk and Jano. Like, Jano obviously got get, got injured a pretty decent amount and stuff like that. And Kirk, obviously, you showed the second half of the season where he slowed down. Brandon Belt is going to get a lot of at-bats. Like, let's not fuck around. Let's not fool around here. Let's not lie to ourselves. He's going to get a lot of at-bats. No, and, it, and it's a guy you want getting at-bats. Like, if he's healthy, he makes his team better. He's the left-handed bat. I'm, I'm happy with Ross. And then... Another person they're talking about right now getting is Alex Reyes. I think he's down to three teams. So this offseason did – sorry, the front office did a couple of things we want in the offseason. Get guys who throw fucking fuzz and then figure out the bats, get more left-handed and uh, a little more versatile, and I think that's what the team's done. 100%. So I'm, I'm, ha- I'm excited. It's going to be a different brand of Blue Jays baseball. We've lost some home runs. We're going to score runs a different way, and that's how the game's going with all the rule changes as well, right? The no shift. Uh, stuff like that so yeah i'm, ex- I'm excited we need baseball to hurry the fuck up yeah we're close man i, I like i said i'm not gonna say how <laughs> we many ne- days. we never know how to do that i never know how many days um we are but i know we are close and speaking about this i quite literally almost died last night i gotta go into this story um so i so i, I was in vegas obviously for my buddy's cross uh bachelor party and um the flight did, was did delayed. you come out with money or no yeah, I came back with like a thousand American. Um, hit a lick, but uh, so I, I uh, seventy three days till MLB opening day. Book it. This is fully actually counted. Okay, so that's ten more of, uh, Gate fourteen episodes. But um, so anyways, I, but I get to the airport at like um, I want to say three, and my flight is supposed to be at like five fifteen. So I'm like, all right, two hours, really, whatever. That's sick. Usually Swoop will send you an email when your flight's delayed. I never got an email. So I show up to the gate at like four just to kind of sit down and chill. After you were bragging on the way down there, how early you were. Yes. And there is no one at this. And it says like 715 delayed. I'm looking at my phone like, oh, my fucking God. Like this is delayed two hours. So anyways, I'm there. And obviously the flight from Vegas to Toronto is like about four hours or Hamilton. Sorry, it's about four hours. So for the listeners of the show that know me, they know my car has no heat and no AC. <laughs> so I arrive back. I, my flight lands at about 240. You have to go through customs, obviously. Then you have to f- get your bag. So I had to wait through all that. So it's about 3 a.m. I pay my parking ticket. I go to my car. And first of all, I didn't think my car was going to start because it's been in the cold in like three days. And I was like, this is nightmare fuel. Yeah. So I didn't think my car was going to start. I start the car. Luckily, it starts. And then I'm scraping off the windows. I'm like, all right, that's fairly kind of, I can kind of fairly see um, th- through the window because there's no heat. I couldn't see shit. So <laughs> I, I am, and I, and the worst part about it is I couldn't roll down my windows because they were frozen. So if I wanted to poke my head out to like get like a clear view of where I was going, I couldn't do that. So if you know the Hamilton Airport, you know how to exit it. There's like little, medians between all like where you have to exit like where the parking is where you have to put your ticket in i almost didn't see this median and just went straight into one and i and i was like i saw it last second so anyways i pull over when i get out of the parking and i scrape the front windows it does fuck all so i go to leave and i'm making a left turn to go into like the left lane or to the right lane obviously and to like just i just have to go straight from there so i'm like if i get through here i am smooth sailing till i get to till i get to the house so um, I make the, I go to make the left and I can't see fucking shit. Cause there's lights everywhere. And it's like beaming onto like my frosted window. So I'm literally like blind. And I'm like, am I going to hit this median here in the center of the road? So I go wide as fuck. And I just drive my car into like a curb full of like snow 
and I just fucking rip it left and go right back in the lane like nothing happened. I didn't even care to look at how my car looked at the front. I was like, just get me the fuck home. So every single stop sign or every single light, I was just scraping my front windows until like my body heat would like dissolve onto it or get onto it so I could just like wipe it with my hand and see. So moral of the story is like I almost died because I literally just had no idea what was going on. And I was just like, please just get me home. Please just get me. How full was that flight from? It wasn't. I mean, it was pretty fucking full. Really? Yeah, it was pretty full. Did people see you go into the snowbank? Yes. There was a cab behind me that saw it. And I was like, (laughs) and then he kept, and then he like kept following behind me, like not too close. Cause he was like, this guy's a wild card. Like, I don't know what the fuck this guy's going to do. He definitely thought you were fucked up. Yeah, that and then like when he so him and I almost went to like the same street where I was staying, but it was fucking wild, dude. It was wild, but yeah, man. Vegas, man. Have you ever been to Vegas? No, I've never been. What the fuck, man? I got some pals that are living there, but never been. You know how cheap it, a flight is to Vegas on Swoop? It's like three hundred dollars. Round That's trip. A round trip. Yeah. You got to get down there, man. I'm telling you, bro. You got to get down there. It's it is. How did you feel like you had to leave at by the end of it? That's what everyone said. No. <laughs> okay. No. Most I people... wasn't. See, this is the difference. I wasn't staying. I'm not staying on the strip when I'm down there. Okay. You're staying at Bryson's place. Yeah, no, like we rented Airbnb for that. Or oh. like I've never stayed on the strip when I go to Vegas. So I'm not like seeing these fucked up people at, like 3 a.m. Like just strolling through and stuff like that. But I, I will love give watching you, those type of people though. I do too. I do too. And I'm one, one day I do want to go down. I'm going back to Vegas in three weeks for the actual wedding. Um, but I do, I'm going to be there for Super Bowl Sunday, which I don't think I'm prepared for. That's going to be no. fucking crazy. But um, I will say this. I do want to experience Vegas as a tourist. Cause I've never had to, I've always stayed at my buddies or whatever, or Bryson's and stuff like that. But um. Yeah, I do want to experience that. And I will give you a tip for the. I know a lot of our listeners are maybe in like the late teenage age, early 20s that are getting close to those Vegas age. If anyone on the strip asks you, do you want me to take you to the strip club in a limo or like like or it's like a limo driver? Do not go in. They will take you to a back alley and beat the fucking brakes off you and just steal all your shit. So never take what people are doing in Vegas as like Did that happened to you. No, no, no. It's just like, that's what my, my, my buddies who are locals told me like, they're okay. like, yeah, they're like, just never go into these like things that the people asking you to go to places and stuff. Cause it's, well, I got, I got a good Chris Roach story from you about the Let's strip club this weekend. What happened? Let's hear the Chris Roach story. Okay. So I wasn't there. I had, I'd left the bar. We were in London this weekend. Um, I hear, so they, they got back to their room. We were in this hockey tournament. Chris Roach apparently goes to the strip club at 2, 2 a.m., like kicked out of the bar. And he's he, <laughs> <laughs> the bouncer, the bouncer says, like, we're closed. We can't get in. Okay. And Chris goes, What if I pay you 50 bucks? And the guy was like, sure, like, sure, I'll take the 50 bucks. 50 bucks, he lets them in. They go inside the strip club and then they immediately get kicked out by people in the strip club because it's closed. Right. <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> he, he gave him 50 bucks to get let into the strip he gave club. him 50 bucks to walk three steps pretty much is what i think happened like maybe we'll have to get uh chris on the show to tell the story but so then he now he starts fighting the bouncer to get his money back oh like, my god he's like come on man what are you doing like give me some money he, so then he starts negotiating 20 dollars back apparently he had one of the strippers on his side like trying to get the money back as well. <laughs> That's what he told me when he when he got back. Was that they were on his side? So he was like, "Yeah, twenty bucks back." And she's like, "Yeah, just give him twenty bucks back." And then apparently he slipped in there. He's like thirty bucks back, and the bouncer's like, "What? You just want thirty dollars now?" So Chris Roach got his twenty dollars back. He paid thirty dollars to be inside the strip club for five minutes. That guy is. <laughs> is something else he is something we, else we also went we also were at the bar and uh we were lucky because the bartender we spent so much money the night before uh on friday night that the bartender like got jer's uh ig and dm'd him and said hey if you guys want to come back like, i'll get you guys in and we just bought shit ton of, we were there for maybe an hour Did and you a get half recognized that you didn't get recognized probably right it was, it yeah, was uh, I, I from work stuff not from gate 14 no uh master gators out in london area. no no i'm sure there's a bunch but then chris just put 
we ran up a thousand dollar bill with like an app in, in within an hour and chris just paid it all on his credit card and he everyone, what the fuck <laughs> is wrong with that guy <laughs> He just had no issues. Chris Roach, I, I wish the Master Gate, I wish I, maybe when we do like a group outing or something like that at a Jays game, maybe we'll rent out a restaurant or a bar before the game and stuff like that. And Chris will come out and, and we'll I just think feed him a, a bottle favorite. of Whitney. That's the only way you get Chris Roach is a very quiet person until you start getting him fucked up. Maybe one of the quietest dudes ever. Yeah. That, like you, the listeners will understand, but I want to talk about this because I promised uh, Moral I would talk about this. Um, so our good friend Connor Mora, you know him obviously as well. Yep. Um, he does this online like strength and conditioning program that he works with like MLBers, like the Nailers. He works with like all these guys. He works with Tejon Buchanan on Team Canada. I just told them, I told them I'd, I'd give him a shout out for our listeners. I know a lot of our listeners are obviously up and coming baseball players or up and coming athletes and stuff like that. So maybe, maybe if if you have any fucking integrity, you'll follow True North SP. And you could just, I don't know, just follow him, hit him up, look at some of the stuff, maybe get a little bit of a, of a run through with uh, Moro. But he is a fucking genius with this shit. He's like, a he, shit house too. He, he's also massive. He studies this shit like it's a god. Di- I mean, obviously, it's his job, so I'm assuming that's why he's good with it. But he's one of the head of the higher-ups on Ontario Blue Jays. So if you guys are young, young baseball players or young athletes and listening to this shit and want to get ahead of it, man, follow True North SP on Instagram. So. And then his brother. I don't know how him and Tosh are related. They're they're half they're half, like uh they have the same mom. Okay, or, yeah, I knew yeah. they I knew they were related, but and his brother just took a I job. The as, Diamondbacks. Everything's coming that. up for the Moro family. Yeah, everything's know, coming man. up. He was one of my favorite coaches I've ever played. Just an yeah. awesome guy. He's no a legend. Better. He's a legend. I fucking love Tosh. So but, uh, so our NL our NL team is now the Diamondbacks. Only their minor league teams though. Yeah, not yeah. Well, I'm not rooting for Lourdes, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I so I want. One thing that's so funny is, and I talk, I made a tweet about this the other day. Um, every once in a while, when I'm bored, like I'll just look on like random Instagrams on my Explorer page, and the picture that keeps popping up to me is the Bradley Zimmer engagement picture. And this is probably the last time we'll talk about him, but I just find it so fucking funny how his engagement picture is just flooded with like 130 comments saying come on the gate 14 podcast and i have a challenge here for the gate 14 boys maybe me and you avery could back this up do this to alec manoa i want 150 comments on alec manoa's picture or should we do manoa or chris bath i think manoa would be more like no i have history with him i want 150 fucking i want to listen this podcast get a couple thousand get a couple thousand listens humble brag I want every fucking comment under that guy, every post he makes, go on the Gate 14 podcast. I want it to be impl- implemented into his fucking brain to come on this podcast. To understand? I want this dude on the podcast so bad. He is. Did you see? I, I saw Chris Black did another um, uh, thread uh, thread on him and stuff like that. So I, I why maybe you could back this up because you're a fucking genius. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Why does every projection think Manoa is going to be asked this year? Oh, because his own his uh, like stat cast numbers was like Babip wasn't great. Or sorry, it was so good. So there's some regression in that. Um, didn't really limit hard contact. Didn't have great swing and miss stuff like all the strikeouts. So some and then those projections will just take that into a formula, keep it going. So. I don't really look into it. Like you look at the steamer projections, bad X projections, how often they're right is not probably really, rare. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a coochie's going to be good though. So I will back that up on that. that, well, that that's the, the only one that's true. Where are you at with the Kikuchi jersey? Because like I said, hey, I mean, obviously, hopefully we have more Gate, Gate 14 stuff out by that time. I don't know what the fuck JR is doing with this Gate 14, with this merch guy, with the website. Maybe you can figure it out. I'll text him about it. We were, we're talking gonna about be there hockey. for opening like we're gonna be there for opening day like that's confirmed that's happening i'm yeah, I, i'm giving up a trip to nashville to go. avery's for listen here people avery is giving up a trip to nashville free to trip. come uh, a free trip to nashville to come to opening day with me and may, uh, maybe we got to get a camera guy or someone we could trust like, well, we have I, but, landon will be there Okay, but I, like, okay, the drive up, I guess we could do that. Is landing going to be okay with being the fucking camera guy, though? Maybe I'll buy his tickets and he'll be like, he'll have to be designated camera guy and just get maybe, our reactions. Maybe Jano can get us tickets while we're there. We'll see. I've never asked Jano for tickets. I never will. I only asked the opposing players for the Jays because those seats <laughs> are fucking fire. Um, but yeah, no, I, we're going to be there for opening day, man. I'm. It's 72 days. Like, that's not a lot of days. Till, it's going to be freezing cold in St. Louis still. Oh, yeah. It's going to be fucking nightmare. 
It's going to be very cold. By the way, we forgot to talk about this. We got to talk about, speaking of freezing fucking cold, Blue Jays were in BC, (laughs) and a picture emerges of uh, the Toronto Blue Jays closer, Joel Romano, has his septum pierced. And you know the fucking old white dudes that hate, that yell at clouds all day and call people social butter or social activists on Twitter. They hated it, obviously. A lot of the the old, uh, maybe from no offense, Barry, Ontario, Peterborough region, uh, people hated it. But uh, I'm in on it. Uh, your closer has to be a little weird for him to be good. Like Mariano Rivera is pretty much a Fox News analyst. He's a weirdest motherfucker there is on the planet. You need your closing pitchers to be, they're like goalies. The weirder they are, the better they are. And I think Joe Romano, who has a septum piercing, which is so fucking random, by the way, like, I, I, whatever. Um, I'm all in on it. I'm all in on the Jordan Romano nose piercing. I, I think I maybe probably wouldn't want to see it on the field. No, definitely not on the field. <laughs> I think it's cool off the field, though. It's well, kind it, of electric. It seems very like him, and I, I got no problem with that show little little personality it makes him seem a little crazier to be honest like maybe, maybe it is intimidating though like if an opposing player sees a uh there's the first of all he's uh, a lewis or it's not lewis spencer who's so fucking funny on twitter did a uh <laughs> his he did when he does the berry stuff like the convoy <laughs> shit last year like so funny every time yeah it is so fucking spencer's the best but um he posted like the 500 levels when Jordan Romano walks out to like some weird rock song, just a mosh pit. Like <laughs> I think Romano is going to go full on. Like, I don't know. I think he's done with the EDM shit. He's going to go full on psychopath, like Mariano Rivera enter Sandman ask crazy shit next year. And it's going to be psycho, but Romano and the, Romano the light show would be nuts for a nice little uh, punk rock song. Yeah. A hundred percent. And Romano, like everything was coming up Jordan Romano this week. Cause another picture emerged. I tweeted from gate 14. He's just packing grizzly fucking wintergreen, just sitting at the table at a local Denny's in BC. I mean, this dude, everything's coming up Romano right now. You just love to see it. Didn't they ban flavored dip here? Yeah, not in in Ontario. They did. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think maybe maybe it's it's a nice little treat for him, a little dessert out there. Yeah, a nice little dessert. I fucking love Jordan Romano. Just an electric. He's just he's electric. The the list that had Jordan Romano is like the fortieth best reliever in baseball with Chris Martin ahead of him. (laughs) MLB nerds, by the way, is the biggest fucking moron. Well, on the I internet. think they do that. Be, they're they're in the clicks business. Okay, you think that? Yeah, because that list was wild. They have like, to be in the clicks. Some of the stuff is like you can't even make up. Like you can be a normal level headed person, and some of the takes they come up with are just <laughs> nuts. And this is one thing about you being like, just like you're a pure guy, and maybe you're not as dialed in on, on like the Blue Jays internet as I am. Like just like I keep my nose to it. One guy who's not in the clicks business, who's just a fucking moron, is Blue Jays' dad. <laughs> I, I, and that guy, you didn't know who that was. I remember. Yeah, I, I did you, know who it was. Oh, you did. I'd seen all his like. I okay, see maybe it, it was up. Jr. Because I remember I, I mentioned in our group chat, you're like I, someone was like, I have no idea who that is. Okay, maybe it was you, but uh, or maybe it was Jr. Of course, but it was Jr. Man. The people, the continued comments that the Jays don't have a good bullpen guy or a guy with swing and miss stuff like. Aaron we to, Swanson. We just had to let a guy go who throws 102 because we were picking other people up. Like, just watch Eric Swanson video. Like, please, just, just shut up and watch Eric Swanson pitch. Let, watch him cook. I think Eric Swanson is going to be good. A lot of pressure on him, obviously. If he doesn't do good, that Teo well, I don't know if there's that much pressure on him, to be honest. Like, what role do you think he's going to carve out? Because I can like see him being sixth, our seventh inning guy. Sixth or snow, but... Garcia or Bass Garcia Romano, right? Yeah, that's fucking sick. That is a good backup. <laughs> yeah, that's that, you're really on the same. I tweeted it. Those are the Jays have three guys, have three guys now with sub two five yard rays in their bullpen. So the people that are talking like, oh my God, the Jays, this, Jays, that, like, because he said they didn't have a better three man than Cecil, whoever, Osuna, and someone else in those seasons. Yeah. And then you look at ERA plus from all of like our, those three guys you said. It's all better than all those other guys. So he was just unfortunate. It's just a guy that has no business, like no idea what he's talking about. And he just gets roasted the most on people, Twitter. People who can't put their names out there and have to like go by aliases. Yeah. Not great to me, but except Spencer. Uh, shout yeah. out Spencer. Well, some of the shit he says is like nuts. So <laughs> it's probably better for him. 
So what are you thinking? I mean, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I mean, the renovations look close to being done at the Rodgers. And like, they keep posting and stuff like that. I think it's going to be fucking awesome, dude. Yeah, I can't wait to get buckled there one time. Like, Oh, it's going to be. Maybe I, they should incorporate some shade for the summer, too, because it gets disgustingly hot. Do you remember dude. that game? I think you and I were at the Reds Canada Day game. That was the hottest game on the planet. Is I that when remember- we, we saw Sura at the field? Yeah. 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 That was ridiculous. Like, the only thing about the Rotter Center, it's literally like we always talk about. It's literally a slab of concrete. So, when you're sitting in the 100 levels when it's really sunny out, I remember I went to a Jays-Royals game last year, and I just watched it standing up, like, behind the railing. I was like, I'm not going anywhere near that sun down there. Like, I was Howie from the fucking bench warmers. I'm not going anywhere near that motherfucker. But, yeah, I don't know. I, it, it, it's going to be sick, man. I, I will be sitting there a lot next year, I think, or just, like, just chilling on that patio. Yeah, maybe game. they have, like, um, just anyone can get in, like, general i don't think so though right i think it has to be like what they did with cleveland where you have to specifically get those tickets like the standing room ones right Mm. or maybe they they make it like the uh the flight deck where you can just go it'll be interesting no matter what it's not it's better renovations a lot of parks are doing it to just have you know it's not always great to sit down the whole time if they're those uncomfortable seats which they've hopefully changed but i'm I'm excited to see it something different it's been the same roger center forever right yeah pretty boring what are your thoughts? So I also I made that TikTok today about the black jerseys. You all in on those black jerseys? Yeah, I used to like when I started playing OBJ. I used to wear them. Um, I think they're fire, man. Uh, the like the J logo on the hat I thought was fucking dust. It looked like it re- yeah, it's Freedom Convoy hat. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was really bad. <laughs> um, but I I always liked the jerseys. I the black one. It makes no sense for the Blue Jays to be black. So. In that sense of the word, I think it's... But it would be a good, like, for example, the Phillies, right? They always wear their throwbacks every home game on Thursday, like the blue throwbacks. Um, I guess I it's think, like the Sabres going back to the, like, the goat head logo, right? Yeah. No, exactly. Exactly. I, I like those jerseys. And the... Fuck, I forget the guy on Twitter who photoshopped Bo as... Uh, yes, Cameron. MLB card art. Sick. Looks so it looks sick. unbelievable. Vladdy would look so slim in those two. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. They, uh, our team, the Jays would look so much more yoked with those. <laughs> it would look incredible. But another thing we forgot to talk about the gate 14 bump is real. Danny Jansen, 3.5 mil in ARB. Is that good? Just a little payday for our guy. That was wild. I mean, deservingly so, but fuck, good for him, man. 3.5 million right after coming on the pod. Some are saying there's a correlation. I mean, yeah, we could we could take some of that probably, for sure. I got ten percent, but <laughs> yeah. th- this is one thing that also we'll, we'll, we'll end it on our second last thing here is the top ten lineup list was released by MLB.com, and the Jays are at three, and people are not people, sorry, Yankee fans are having goddamn fits. Let me make this very fucking clear, Yankee fans. Did you guys get better pitching wise? One million percent. Carlos wrote wrote on to that rotation makes you guys a juggernaut. But the problem with the Yankees last year was the bottom of their order had Aaron Hicks, the human strikeout who pimps fly balls, Josh Donaldson. It, they were garbage. Did the Yankees get better lineup wise this offseason? No, no, they did not get any better lineup wise offseason. So Yankee fans that are still thinking they're entitled to be ranked in the top ten for lineups, shut the fuck up. The, the more. Did you replace? I mean, you have to still have Aaron Hicks potentially be in a lineup. Not every day, I guess, but still be in that lineup. The left side of your infield is IKF and Josh Donaldson, for Christ's <laughs> sakes. Those dudes are bums. Yeah, that so, shit sucks, bro. Like, the, the 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 hyping of the Yankees going into next season will never make sense to me. And I, I hope I don't get old takes exposed on this because I'm going to clip this, put it on Twitter. The Yankees are going to be fucking terrible this year offensive, offensively. Their pitching staff is, gonna, is what's going to hold them up. But the more you have IKF and JD on the left side of the infield and potentially having to play Aaron Hicks, you guys are going to be fucking trash. And the Toronto Blue Jays lineup is 100 million times better than the New York Yankees. And that's not even a fucking hot take. It's not even a hot take. No, you needed Aaron Judge to have a career year for the Yankees to have a solid line. And there's going to be some regression regression there. You think so? Who's going to pick those home runs up? You'd think so. They they don't give him candy ass baseballs to just sock dingers with anymore because he's not going to go for the record. 
Great point. Yeah, no more uh, the juice balls. Yeah, but we'll see. But um, I'm pumped for it. J- JR might have been a year too early on his take that the Yankees yes. had a bad luck. Maybe because we'll post- I, I, not going to lie, I totally agreed with him at the time. And it was just guys having career years. That was at the part was that was at the point of the year when they intentionally walked Miggy. Remember yeah, that? That was with so the three, with the th- 3000th hit. Yeah, but they were getting mad when Judge getting outside walked? when that was happening. When they were mad about Judge getting walked. <laughs> yeah. I I mean I hate the Yankees, dude. They're fucking bozos. Oh god, me too. But whatever. Yeah. So anyways, man, I know a lot of people um were expecting an episode today. Obviously, I was in the middle of hell um <laughs> in the Sonata. Hopefully my new car gets here soon so I don't have to fucking deal with this shit anymore. But um as always, man, love you guys. Uh, hopefully next time we talk to you, the Jays have a fourth outfielder. I'm going to keep saying hopefully next time we talk to you stuff because they got us Brandon Belt. Yep. So hopefully next time we talk to you, the Jays have a fourth outfielder or Ross did something. But um, love you guys. Gate 14 to the moon, man. The numbers that our episode, I guess we talk about this. The amount of downloads and views our episodes have been getting in the off season is still, it, it still is mind boggling. It's crazy. I can't wait to see what you guys like the support that we have in the season and stuff like that, man. And the content's going to be great too. We're going to be vlog. Like me and Avery have a lot of things planned out. Like I, I, I obviously have the ultimate goal of like when me and Avery go to Jay's games, we vlog it. Like we just have mics on us or whatever, like, and just uh, vlog like we did with the full game uniform and stuff like that. And like the Yankees game, it'll be electric, but we have a lot of plans coming up for this year. So stay tuned. And uh, 72 days till opening day, 72 days till opening day. Love you guys. Gate 14 to the fucking moon. And uh, let's have ourselves a week.